as my coach describes it, an ordinary person, uh, you know, making an extraordinary effort can make it across the channel. If it was any longer, it, it would be nearly impossible. If it was any colder, it would be nearly impossible. They're sort of perfect conditions so that any strong swimmer who's prepared to commit to this, you know, and, and has the mindset to do it, can do it. I grew up in Africa and we used to live near a large lake. I, I really sort of liked open water swimming, the feeling of freedom. And I, I did it a lot with my father around. As part of the training, I, I, I did a four person relay across the channel. It was a fantastic, fun event. I got to see all the variables and I got to see that actually, you know, there was a large part of the event that was sort of out of your control, really. So by February, I was I was kind of super confident. And then at the end of February, I had a, a bad car crash and damaged my right shoulder. And then we went into lockdown. And for me, I was really lucky because you know, I have something called a, a fast lane, which is like the swimming equivalent of a treadmill. When we did start coming out of lockdown, I was in reasonable shape. But again, I've been swimming on my own for three months and had no idea of you know how, how quick I was. So about half as many people have swum the English Channel than have climbed Everest. And really the reason behind that is it's not an easy thing to do logistically. There are circa 12 boats and pilots that are licensed to escort you across the channel. You can only swim for two weeks of every month during the low tides. And again, you know, inside your window, you need the weather to be playing up. A window open but the, the window was a sort of slightly unusual window and I would look to leave at about seven o'clock in the evening and swim through the night. So we set off on the 13th of September. Look how far I've gone already! <laughs> look at the speed you're going! <laughs> I'd been super nervous running up to to that point but you know when I got there um, you know I just thought you know you, you just kind of got to get this done. When you get to the shore you raise your arms a klaxon heads off to be fair, the rest is a little bit of a blur. I saw him for the first hour in daylight, um, which, which was nice. Then it got dark. I normally wear a watch when I'm swimming, but my coach had said, look, don't, don't wear your watch, which actually proved to be a really good thing. So after a while, I kind of lost track of time. And at about the four hour point, I was I was really, really suffering. And I thought, you know, I'm not sure I'm gonna make this. And then I thought, you know what? Just, just make it to dawn, you know? Just make it to dawn. Mm -hmm. I thought of kind of, all the good things in, in my life, you know, my family, not letting the charity down, not letting my sponsors down. I just sort of kept going, really. And then it got easier. When dawn broke, you know, it was a massive, massively uplifting experience. And I could see the French coast um, and, it, and it felt felt really close uh, and I kind of knew then that I'd, I'd make it come what may. I was on the, the final stretch heading up to something they call Cap Grenet and interestingly enough uh, Cap Grenet has a lighthouse on it and even in the water when you look up you, you can see Cap Grenet. Almost there. Come on mate let's go! I landed at a point called the La Seren Slipway, picked up my pebble, which is a bit of a custom, you know, waded back out to the rib where I was taken back to the boat. Well done, JP! It wasn't really a, a feeling of elation at that stage. It was just a feeling of 
utter relief that it was over. When we got back to Dover and my wife was there and you know it was it was amazing. But I was I was having problems breathing. It only took me really about two or three days to kind of physically recover from it. Probably helped by the, the 24 hours in A&E, frankly. But uh, mentally, it probably took me, you know, quite quite some quite some time to kind of recover. Interestingly enough, the sort of 24 hours in, in hospital kind of had quite a bit of time to reflect about it. One of the interesting reflections was the parallels between the swim and and, and what it is that that fortitude does. And I remember. One night as a child, I was, uh, you know, I was pretty ill. My mum and dad were with me and um, my dad just said to me, look, you know, it's going to be a tough night. Just make it to the dawn. And with all the sport I'd had and, and was receiving during the swim, I knew that if I kind of just hung on, you know, the dawn would come and, you know, it'd be fine. And that's what happened. I thought of all the, the, the fantastic work that Fortitude does. And I think, you know, for a lot of people, Fortitude is, is, is not only the, you know, the hope that the dawn will come, but, but because of the early detection of colon cancer, you know, the chance that there isn't that night to go through. So yeah, I was just really grateful to have done it. And if I could, you know, contribute financially to Fortitude and to the great work that they do, then, you know, then it would be all worthwhile. Come on, JP, let's France, keep going. <laughs> no, almost there. <laughs>